Just know that I'm safe. Just know that I'm good. Just know that it wasn't as bad as it looks. I hope this ain't as great as it And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are back today. Another very, very special guest. He is a part of Spokane's own Affiliated. He is a local hip-hop artist, singer, songwriter, rapper. Um, with his new song, As Bad As It Looks Now, on all platforms, this is Zayshawn Hayes. Hello. How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Of course, of course. Um, thanks for reaching out and uh, noticing the podcast. It makes me feel pretty good, and I'm glad to have you. Of course, man. Um, so, first thing I wanted to ask, what's up with the bunny ears? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, absolutely nothing. It's more just like a feeling. I yeah? Love, you know, so yeah. Just, you know, just fun. Just we're having fun over here. Where'd so you find really them? Um, I found it... Huh. Found it through one of the, uh, just one of the various artists that I used to watch back in the day. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was Kid Trunks or, no, that's not right, uh, Shinigami. Okay. Shinigami, yeah, he got a pair of these and I was like, that's fucking hard. And, uh, I really like, kind of like weird, like cutesy things as yeah. much as I can. If I can like, uh, blend something with that, with like some crazy pants, like I got here, I got some zombie pants on, can't really see them, but... <laughs> So it kind of all blends. I like it. Yeah. Like it. On your style, stick with it. Stay true to yourself. That's huge, especially in an industry where, you know, things can get lost and washed in with each other. It's it's good to stand out and have your own personality, not be afraid of it and stick to it. Oh, yeah. No. You, you know, you've. Um, I always like the idea of just like somebody turning around, like when I'm riding the bus or something, mm -hmm. somebody's just like, what the fuck is yeah. this guy doing? Because I, I don't know. It's just funny. <laughs> it's funny to think about. <laughs> yeah. And there's something to that with artists in general whether you know you're doing graffiti downtown you're a rapper you're a you're a crazy painter you're a poet there's something that whatever creativity that drives them to be an artist like that it's got to be represented and like the same characteristic is going to be in other areas of your life like yeah. like with your fashion or you know crazy mohawk are you going to do your hair so i think it's cool to be able to express yourself with your art and then carry that over to your day-to-day -day life and just oh, like yeah. express yourself as a person as yeah. there the hasn't artist. been many artists that i've met that haven't had a little bit of that natural like eccentric attitude mm -hmm. <laughs> or like just like a uh, feel about them anyway you know everybody's a little quirky i think that's <laughs> huge um so yeah we'll take it back a little bit where are you from originally uh spokane washington born and raised hey yeah, hello yeah, me too. I was Shout born out. on the South Hill, grew up on the South Hill forever. So mm, nice hill, yeah, hill, yeah. love love representing Spokane and getting people on that, you know, trying yeah. to do something out of Spokane because yeah. it's tough compared to cities like L.A. or Houston, Atlanta. It's it's tough tough to make it out yeah. from little of Spokane. Yeah, Spokane's really funny like that. You know, little big city. What I always say, you know, um, I'll always end up like talking to somebody, and you know, they might end up being like my fucking cousin or something. Or, yeah. You know, my dad's barber or some shit, you know, like, that's crazy. So there's, like, always small, always small instances of just, like, you can really see that, like, they're, the community here is just so fucking, so vast and vague, but at the same time, it's actually pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty in-depth, like, everybody kind of can know everybody if you, if you're trying out there. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. We're pretty fortunate to have been placed here yeah so no, i think seriously. that's cool um so let's dive in a little bit deeper into your newest project as bad as it looks tell me a little bit about your inspiration for this song how it came about like how long it yeah. took you to make this track uh, give us the background of this whole piece yeah so i mean really it's uh working with top uh we were just hanging out and able to perform and be yourself and sing with your full voice in front of a room of strangers how was it as a kid growing up and like did your parents influence you or were you in like choir as a kid where is this coming from for being being able to be confident and not pressured to be yourself because that's really tough for a lot of people uh well i think when i was younger i think i just never really understood a whole lot of like social situations and i i mean i was just always kind of the loudest kid in the room and a lot of the time i always had to deal with the double-edged sword of that like being like a center of attention because sometimes it wasn't always in the in a positive light like you know sometimes i would always feel like the anxiety or pressure of like saying too much mm -hmm. and then like not backpedaling <laughs> just like keep going when i was younger or like you know even when it was like annoying a girl or something and just like it was always something that uh I felt like I think it was only natural that when I got older, I kind of just felt better about approaching people. Obviously, I, I'm not a little shitter, <laughs> you know, so I think like I can use I can use a little bit of how I was back then of like being OK to be the center of attention and just also learning how to like, 
you know, accept any negative repercussions or not even negative, but just like something that, you know, like if I fumble a conversation or if I like stumble my words and somebody doesn't get what I mean, like I don't have to like, you know, take that negatively or anything. And I can also maximize that with like when I create and when I'm making music of just being like very showman. I think Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I like expressing like in my videos to come and stuff to see you know i think it, that's kind of the quality of just like throwing my hands up and be like i'm here <laughs> you know this hello. is me you get what yeah. you get facts exactly how would you describe your sound like overall <clears throat> hmm i think you know it's just like i always tell people when i was younger i was always skittles i was like you know you're just gonna get a couple couple different flavors all the time you know yeah. sometimes it's a little mystery but uh a big thing i know i was just uh on I guess just unignorable, really. Hmm. I think that's a big vibe that uh, it just gives off because no matter whether I'm trying to rap or trying to sing, there's always like kind of just a bigger, a bigger picture or something, you know, that's like being said that is going to like, you know, hit at the end of the day so <laughs> or resonate with somebody in a, on more levels than even I could explain in words. Hmm. Unignorable. That's really powerful. I've never heard somebody like come out and say it like that but i mean whether you're into like like for example i don't i'm not a fan of country music i didn't grow up listening to country i grew up listening to like rock blues rap but um my girl loves country music and so like when a good country song comes on but it's amazing guitar play amazing banjo Mm -hmm. the dude's voice is amazing his lyrics aren't the same shit you always hear i'm like this is this is a really good song yeah and so being like that's huge i totally see where you're coming from where if you have undeniable the bars you have a great beat you have a great flow you have a great presentation of your sound and can project Definitely. like that's gonna be unignorable and you're gonna get entranced by yeah you per- know beautiful sound getting those fundamentals down just leaves like you know what you're trying to say or like the emotion you're trying to convey like that just will come naturally and i think there's just like it's just like with learning like uh to like fight or to like ride a bike or to like race a car or like there's always going to be fundamentals that are general to multiple people that everybody had to learn those things first before they were able to put their style into their craft mm-hmm. and i think that's just like always something that's going to be an apparent thing what do you like to do besides making music and performing? Oh, dude, I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking gamer through yeah. and through. <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I uh, and I also just I kind of like creating like, you know, messing around with like graphical art or like uh, I like making like video long form content hmm. and uh, or kind of like you know skits and making up like little ideas that we could do for like videos and stuff. I was always a big fan of the Adult Swim commercials. Oh yeah. So anything I can do that like kind of. Is in the weird natures of just like what's like some random shit that we could do like pretty easily. I always like to jot those things down. That's huge. What types of game were you talking about? Uh, uh, a, a lot of them, <laughs> all of them. I think anything. Uh, you know, I played a lot of like PS2 games when I was a kid, so a lot of Sony stuff, mm-hmm. a lot of like uh, Resident Evil. I think I'm a big fan of their franchise. Uh, I like horror games, but I also like puzzles and like survival stuff. Big solo, not a big multiplayer guy. Like yeah. you won't see me on the Fortnite or the, like Rainbow Six Siege or anything like that. Just anything like that I can really get into by myself. You know, have a joint, have a drink, fucking just get lost for a little bit. Yeah, just relax. You know, it's nice. Where do you see yourself a year from now pursuing this music career? Uh, I see myself living somewhere else. Um, not quite sure yet. Nothing set in stone, but. I think uh, I just want to, like, kind of go place to place for, like, years here, years here, and just kind of meet new people, do new stuff, and kind of, like, spread, just kind of spread that little network of influence as much as I can, you know? What type of places come off in the top of your head? Um, well, I got to go Seattle, because there's a lot of people that I, I just kind of met in offshoots times going over there, and they just, like, you know, just became little family over time. And so I already know when I go over there, it's just going to be a blessing. Like, I'm going to be able to do a lot more, not even a lot more, but I'm just going to be able to do stuff with new people, you know, like, uh, 
I think at the end of the day, I just, you're always going to hit a wall unless like somebody like random and new just pops up and I meet him at like a coffee shop on accident. I'm not really going to be, I'll always be making the content and music with the people that I know now here. So, you know, I want to kind of see where that leads me. Um, another place is just somewhere pretty. I think I never really, uh, never been to Oregon. I hear everybody loves Oregon. It's kind of like a pretty place. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've always wanted to go to New Orleans in Louisiana. Um, that's where a lot of my ancestry and family stem from. And uh, I think just East Coast, too, because, you know, never, never been over there. So mm -hmm. that's, that'll just be cool. And if I can find somebody there that can give me a nice little road map, then, you know, we're just having a good time. Hell yeah. I think that's tight getting out to see the world. Who knows what, who you're going to run into, what's going to inspire you to write music, the different sounds you are going to hear from across the country to be like, oh, okay. that's cool. Take it into your own, just kind of have it morph into a whole new thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's whole places that are like, you know, known for just crazy music, you know, like Nashville, you know, Home of Rock, you know, just like stuff like that. It's just like crazy. You think, you know? Who are some of your um, favorite artists that you looked up to growing up? Oh, growing up, uh, I always loved Mac Miller. Mac Miller is one of my favorite artists. I think uh, I think their growth uh, is kind of more of the inspiration uh, than like any anything they've like necessarily created. But the fact that they like you know just refuse to uh, be boxed in and just creating like some of the most craziest songs I've heard in a while. Um, there's also some new artists that I really like, like Gene Dawson. Gene Dawson's really cool. Uh, but that's I think that's been like three years of me listening to them and just really enjoying the their vibes and stuff. Um, My Chemical Romance, I grew up on them. Uh, one day I'm going to see a concert, but probably not. But, you know, I like to say that I'm going to because, yeah. you know, got to make it, got to try for it at least. Put it out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put that energy out there. Affirmations is what I say. Um but yeah, just kind of kind of those kind of vibes, uh, like modern baseball, a lot of Midwest emo style mm. bands and stuff like that. I think I really came to love. What are you listening to now? Do you listen to your own music? Uh, I yeah, honestly, sometimes. Uh, it just depends on like the day. Like if I have a new single, I'll probably bump that new single like three times and just be like, "Fuck yeah!" And like you know, I'll probably listen to it here and there for the week. And then you know, every couple months, I always get into a point where I like. Look at some old projects on my SoundCloud because my SoundCloud holds a lot of uh, older gems that really aren't. Uh, they're just not anything, you know. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't generate currency, but they're out there because you mm -hmm. know th those were like they're like little diaries. It's just like it was very apparent. A lot of those songs were exactly how I was like feeling at the time. Yeah, and, that's huge. You know, and my my art never really needed to make sense when I was a lot younger. It was always kind of. I just sit there and like be like building pieces of my studio and always trying new things and reworking with new plugins. So everything was always like experimental, quote unquote, but not really. Just like kind of fucking making it work. Like, and so that kind of growth just kind of shows with the terps of quality also. What is your creative process for writing a song? Like, let's say you have. Is it sitting down and you and a piece of paper with no idea sit there and write till something pops up? Do you have an idea that you, you know, open your voice memos, get your notes down? What is a creative process for making a song look like for you? Uh, well, you know, nope. Goodbye. Um, generally, not really. I mostly, I mostly do like to like freestyle flows until I can get an idea and then I kind of add lyrics into the flows and kind of just like. I do like to like chop and like I'll add like a hook there and then I'll just like come back later or come up with a bridge at a different part of the verse and everything kind of like I like to bits and pieces it um I never I only rarely just kind of sit down and like we'll finish like one full song in a session mm -hmm. unless it's like a beat that was just like oh yeah I can I can hear the I can hear the song in my head sort of or kind of uh or if it's just something that made sense uh, over the course of a couple hours, you know, it's never like really quick when I come when I kind of do that. But I don't know, uh, writing's just really hard for me because uh, I'll constantly be thinking of a sentence and then I'll never, I'll never go back. Damn, why are you blowing me up? Cause here, better take that. 
And we are back. Um, so yeah, as we were we were just talking about your creative process, and it, it kind of just comes to you, and whatever feels right, you jump back into a song here and there, and just kind of feel it out. It sounds like, huh? Yeah, you know, I just use my little antennas, and I just work through, you know, piece by piece. Uh, I just find it always came easier. I used to write a lot, uh, but I always tended to songs tended to mean more to me or to other people definitely when I like took more time like I don't know I feel like the melody was always like my most important aspect of like building my songs anyway so you know putting my meaning to those like to the sounds like really was what important like I said earlier about as bad as it looks you know it sounded super nostalgic so I always kind of wanted to do callbacks to like that feeling like in the Mm -hmm. song I think those are really important so you were talking about in in the future traveling the country and seeing the world and taking your talents elsewhere um what is one good thing about being a rapper and artist in spokane and what's something that you think spokane is holding holding everybody back from Hmm. one thing i love about spokane that's a good thing that's a good question it's kind of a loaded question there's like a lot of i guess there's like a lot of uh a lot of answers that i could give you know, like, it's pretty. It's such a beautiful city. Um, and really, like, I mean, everybody who's creating here and, like, working just is, are really making it what it is, in my opinion. Like, I don't think, I don't think there's anything a lot better. I, I haven't been to a whole lot of other places uh, other than, like, places that were kind of like, oh, yeah, that just reminds me of Spokane, like, a bit, but... uh you know, I've never really seen anybody so close knit in like different spots. Like you know, like uh, like everybody's doing something. So I think that's kind of the best part about it. And then uh, I think I think it's just a double edged sword. That's probably also the reason why it kind of lacks too. It's just uh, you know, everybody everybody like just is really really excited about doing something that sometimes they. Uh, will disregard like other people and they'll kind of forget that you know like none of us here are like necessarily going like super crazy in terms of numbers like you know I'm trying and I'm you know I'm doing these reps baby and I'm getting these numbers up but at the same time I'm not gonna look at somebody and be like you know I'm trying to like shit on their fucking Mm -hmm. (laughs) trying to shit on their parade and like what they're doing because you know at the end, end of the day all of us are just growing so I think sometimes people think the product they're looking at, like, or somebody they're looking at is just, like, how they're going to be yeah. forever. And that's just not the case. And some people kind of forget that, I think. Yeah, I think, com- <clears throat> like, compared to a place like L.A. where so many people are trying to, quote, unquote, make it big. And you see a bunch of people go there with success. And you see those stories grow from nothing to all yeah. of a sudden, you know, f- it flips overnight type thing. Yeah. Whereas in Spokane, it's not as apparent and as, like doesn't stick out as much to be like yeah look i made it all from spokane so if somebody's trying and somebody else is trying it just feels like because there hasn't been as many positive outcomes it's like damn only one of us is like gonna be able to make it yeah and there's layers there's just so much layers to it because at the same time like yeah you're i mean that's that's almost like spot on and you know nobody's seen nobody's seen that like like success or that overnight you know and that's just because it's not here it doesn't mean it like doesn't happen or yeah exactly and that's what that's not. the thing though it, it couldn't happen it can happen yeah. you, you can blow up top blow up exactly. i'll blow up and we can all feed each other yeah, and exactly. make a way to make our way to the tops together but since there hasn't been as many people putting out and making it big that famine mentality is really real in a place like spokane yeah and that's i think that's just always been the problem like even when i was even when i was younger and doing this you know i had people that weren't afraid to you know steal candy from a baby quite literally Mm -hmm. you know when i was a lot younger i felt like you know you'd be asking somebody for like you know not even that free game like sometimes people would be like yo put in the work and then they you put in the work for them and then at the end of the day they just be like haha like jokes on you dude and that was like always a thing so i uh you know i think i just i've just seen i've seen both sides of how that mentality can like you know destroy friendships and groups and whatnot oh my god hello i didn't know she's in here what a beautiful 
beautiful kitten. I hope y'all aren't allergic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, when I was younger, I was I was really allergic to cat dander. Like I would take like these big old bottles of Zyrtec, and I'd have yeah. to like just be chugging that shit all day. But I guess you could just grow out of allergies. I don't know. I never I'm quite understood. Real quick. Oh my God. Start scratching things. Let me out. Sorry about that. No man, never apologize. I fucking I love I love that guy. Um, next I wanted to ask, where do you think you would be without music in your life? Like as far as you pursuing music? Whoa, dude, you know crazy because i sometimes i try to think about it but it's like one of those weird things where like there's always a i don't know it's kind of a weird analogy but sometimes in my in my imagination i'll try to like balance something like and i'll like try to perfectly keep it balanced but all i could think about is it not being balanced so i can never like hold it steady and i don't know if i need to like that just means i need to meditate or some shit but i try to visualize like what life would even be if I wasn't doing music and it's just it's too fuzzy. It's too fuzzy yeah. to put into picture. Like I just don't think I don't think I'd be much of me. I think I'd always be singing. Mm-hmm. I think in one way or another, you know, I don't think I'd be like busking or anything, but I think like I just if I'm singing in the shower, singing in the car, you know, I think that's just one thing I can see is just me always expressing myself through like music. I think I'd always be chopping it up on beats like if I can. Uh, but that kind of count- that's kind of still making music. So yeah. you know, I don't know. You know, subconsciously, if I was like, I'm not gonna be a rapper, I, I do think I'd just be like, always humming or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, probably be more uh, insatiable than it is now because like I do create music. I always have something to listen to. But I, like you know, at, at work, if I don't got like headphones in or something, like listening to music or listening to something, you know, I think I'd go a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's like, how would you do without legs? Uh, yeah, I mean. You don't know. Yeah, I've never been in that situation. You know, um, there's, it's like it's so hard to describe, but it definitely like music just like fuels like my soul. So that's like definitely my thing. Like some people like to carve wood or something. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think all I could do is just like I think listening to music is like the easiest thing for me to like find that relaxation or find that little like that joy in like this little capitalistic society. <laughs> some so what's motivating you to be great and to keep pursuing this? Uh, everybody I can help, man. Honestly, at the end of the day, uh, I just, I always see so much bad and, and in my circles, you know, everybody's like so hungry and so trying to like, you know, everybody's trying to grind something out, not even, like, music-wise or art-wise, but just, like, straight up, just, like, you know, some people, I got people that are just trying to make it to the first, trying to figure out if they're gonna, you know, be able to stay where they're staying or eat, you know, like, quite literally hungry, so, and I, I just feel like, you know, and they've always been, like, people have been so solid to me, you know, like, I don't even have animosity for somebody, like, who hasn't done anything for me, but, you know, there's a lot of people in my life that have done so much for me when they're still, like, struggling right now. And, you know, all I can, that's all I can think of is, like, paying that back, you know. And I think also coming, like, I think kind of on both ends, I think also just, like, enjoying myself uh, with kind of those opportunities that I get, I think is also a good way to pay it back, <laughs> you know, for somebody who's, like, sacrificed something for me and not, like, family, you know, like, it's a is a good example, but like I just think there's so many more people that have like even done little things that mm-hmm. they don't even know, and I'll just be like, one day, one day you're gonna you're gonna get like a lottery, <laughs> you know, yeah. at the end of the day. What is one really really good memory that sticks out with you for maybe it was performing, maybe it was the best idea for a song you've ever had? What's the best memory you have from making music and performing so far? Hmm. You know, there was a little venue called the Bartlett about the day back in the day, uh, over on like it's like near the Sprague area, like closer to the east side, like heading towards that way, and uh, I think they were doing like a little show run for the last month that it was going to be open for, 
and spontaneously like we didn't know it at the time that it was closing down but we were able to secure like a show between me and a couple friends from uh from back in the day when we made music and that was with an old collective called glass park and uh you can find stuff on youtube there's like a shit ton um but i think there was a night where me and everybody involved just kind of got up on that stage and we packed the bitch out, you know, made more profit than we even, like, could have dreamt of. It's like it a bunch of 15, 16-year-olds uh, that didn't really, you know, we never really had a real vision of, like, you know, branding and stuff like that. We really didn't care. Uh, we really just, uh, even our set list was crazy. We just had, like, a big folder of all the songs that we made, whether they were alone, with each other. You know, four people on a song, three people on a song. We were just interchanging them pretty much mm -hmm. on shuffle all night, like telling people like, hey, you're up. It's you, you and you go get up there. And, and we did that for like two straight hours and people oh, yeah. were just fucking loving it. I mean, we had people jumping off stages and fucking I think even like the backstage, like that was the first time I did like a wasn't like a back like it just wasn't a boring backstage experience you know when i would do shows it would always just be like all right i'm going straight to this room mm -hmm. and i'm gonna like think to myself or like not do anything like sip water and wait till it's my turn sort of situation but we had like just the most fun back there and just had the most fun during the show i think and i always think about you know the more that we can do that and i've had some pretty great shows like more recently like i did a big old show run kind of last year. And that was one of the more scheduled and tidy shows runs that I've done, uh, especially like more, you know, in, in the optics of me, you know, not necessarily like just going on with other people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like something that was really progressing me, like my career and stuff like that. Um, and that was dope, but it, there's just something, there was something about that night that I think like really just like, brings on a feeling of just like yo we can we're gonna be able to do that like a lot more a lot often yeah do you have any big shows or any shows or tours coming up uh yeah we're gonna be doing some shows uh i think coming up this march and uh really in terms of anything real huge uh no that stuff's kind of just in the works i think when summertime comes around is really going to be the time to shine with a lot of like shows and stuff so just be on the lookout where can they be looking to find information about these shows? Oh, they can, uh, you can always find me on my Instagram and my, um, I think we got a, we got a website, right? We got a website? What's that? What's that website link? We'll put that link. We'll, we'll send that link to you. I have everything. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there's always a good way to get more updates from me. Definitely through like, uh, any social media platform at say Sean Hazy. I think that's the best way to just be in touch with me. Um, on the other hand, yeah. Do you have any advice for uh, an aspiring rapper artist coming up right now? Yeah, just it's pretty easy. Just do it for the right reasons. You know, don't think you're gonna wake up tomorrow and have everything because I, I don't think anybody does <laughs> and even if you thought you think you do you might not and mm. then you might end up feeling i don't know spiritually and emotionally empty so just like just do it because you love it and that's really the most easiest thing i could say that's huge um what does it feel like for you once you are on stage performing uh i think just like God, just beaming, man. Just happy. Like, there's no other way I think I can describe it, you know, other than, like, you know, sometimes it's just, like, childlike happiness. Uh, I think I feel more peaceful and in a way that I can make, like, 30 to 20 to 10 to 15. doesn't matter how long it is, but I can just make it feel like, you know, I can make it so memorable so long, like, in my head. Like, I never have to be like, oh, damn, that really great moment's just gone, like, the way that I'm experiencing performing for everybody uh, just kind of lasts, <laughs> lasts forever in my brain, like, permanently singed, and I love that. Do you still get nervous before a show? Oh, fuck, yeah, all the time. Uh, definitely depends on, like, the show, whether I'm feeling like, oh, yeah, dude, I got this just another day, but, you know... um, 
just everything coming up, man, it's, it's never going to be a regular day. And that's like, I think that's the cool part, mm-hmm. you know, like when I did shows that kind of made me go out of my element or, you know, I'm, I'm performing with like ha- higher caliber artists, you know, and I always think very highly of like how I'm creating and when I'm listening to something, I'm just like, ah, oh, damn, fuck yeah. But I listen to somebody else and they're just, you know, mind blowingly just like amazing. You know, and just being able to support those kind of people, like that, definitely brings me out of my comfort zone for sure. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't scare me, so that's nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, what what's the worst experience you've had in music so far? Uh, hey yo, if you so you, you gotta you, you do a festival, right? You, mm-hmm. you say you got a festival, but it's just like a plot of dirt on a and like a it's a mud ball of a situation you know and you're like yeah dude we got this multiple day festival you know you ain't the gorge you you ain't the fucking i think there's been like four four consecutive times that i've been to places where they were like yo we're doing like a festival like camping thing and i love that shit i love camping sometimes but every time I do this shit it like i'm gonna be the one guy that's like ah you know it's not so bad and everybody around me is like this this is terrible. I'll be mm. like, yeah, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, I think some of the worst experiences I've had is performing it like somewhere out of like in the sticks, just like performing because you know sometimes most of the time it's in a shack. Most of the time it's uh most of the time it's raining. I don't know why everybody. <laughs> I don't know how how every single one could be possibly wet, but uh yeah you know and nobody loves doing that. I loved performing. But every single waking second up until those points, I think at any one of those events have always been pretty bad. Damn, that sucks. It's a huge letdown and under, over promise, under delivered. No, uh, you know, it's like how do you how do you promise something of just like hey, you're gonna have a fun weekend? <laughs> you know, well, like, what's fun to the, you? Exactly, dude. And you know, I mean, maybe the, I don't know, man. Maybe some of these guys are just like so fucking blasted or drunk or something. I don't even know, but you know, yeah. they're like, well, this is great. It's fucking like thunder stray, oh, <laughs> lightning man. blows up a tree or some just shit. Classic bad day energy yeah, and there was one that like it was it, it was pretty for sure that it was going to be bad all the way through but it was uh, it, there, it was like some buddy of mine that was actually throwing in i was uh so i wasn't really exper- expecting anything but i definitely knew that something wasn't going to be right mm-hmm. um i had a great performance that night but i think there was instances where like you know somebody some gun toting hip like fucking like some hillbilly dude just was like just he was like rah, 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 just like he straight up was like not speaking english oh, he was no. speaking purely the forest and uh just letting shots off in the air no I don't shit even know, dude. He, was, he was letting off desk pops yeah definitely desk well. popping I don't, <laughs> you know i was never like worried that he was gonna like ah shoot somebody but still it was just like mindless violence of this i was like this dude's so fucked up why is this? you know there's alcohol a, there i had another dude like there was this old dude passing out acid and stuff like that and there was actually quite a few people there surprisingly but you know who doesn't want to go get fucked up in the woods yeah but, uh, there was this dude who was like, he was like, ah, oh, dude, I took too much acid. I fucking, I ended up on somebody else's land and oh, it was shit. my uncle. And I was like, what, dude? He was like, yeah, my uncle was just sitting in a trailer and I just found him in the woods. And I wow. was like, that's. If that ain't the most hillbilly shit. <laughs> that is, I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, there's no other way to describe. Wow. And then and I guess everybody was looking for this guy for like hours. So I was like, oh my God. Damn. But I think those kind of situations are just, you know, like the bad show promotion and people who throw a show and you know they think they got everything right but then they promote it a week before it happens or they think you know everything's going to be fine and dandy and the day of they don't got equipment they Mm -hmm. don't got lights bussing they don't got nothing really to offer except like oh yeah dude i'm gonna be a host and i'm gonna come on stage and announce all these artists and like it's gonna be awesome (laughs) like and that's the only thing they were thinking about all the day yeah What's your what's your Super Bowl performance? What's like maybe it's a certain festival or a certain gig or somebody you're performing with. What's the dream performance where you're like, damn, like I made it. I'm gonna fucking resurrect Tupac on stage. Hey. Like guy, I don't know, fucking uh 
uh, it'll, uh, you know, all I can say is it'll be pretty elaborate. I'd, I'd assume, you know, it would be weird if it was just like, yeah, I'm gonna like sit at my desk, you know, I'm gonna do like an NPR tiny desk like situation. You know, probably a lot of lasers. Do you have like a dream stage or a city? Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I like those long stages. Mm. I'm a big fan of those long stages, and I would uh. I would encourage everyone in the stands. This is probably going to make me not perform in the Super Bowl, but I would encourage everyone at the stands to get out of the stands and come onto the field. Uh, fight the security if you have to. Hey, numbers will win, baby. Yeah, you know, no, <laughs> they can't stop us all. Mm -hmm. They can't stop us all. Uh, but yeah, it'd probably be something like an elaborate long stage. Probably can walk it for days. Uh, I can't even think of Bluetooth technology that will allow me to go as far as I really want to. Like, yeah. I'm talking like end to end would be pretty, pretty crazy. Um, who knows? Maybe they'll make like crazy like Marvel nanobot type stages or some shit where they just can like move and change in the future. Who knows? I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. That would like be a pretty Rorsch sick. Like a Rorschach stage, bro. That'd be kind of weird. Be kind of like some Watchmen shit. But yeah, you know, I think. Uh, I think anywhere where I'm going to be able to do like sparklers yeah. or f fire, I think that's like pretty, that's going to be pretty cool. Pyrotechnics. Yeah, you yeah. know. Just yeah, definitely like if anything that just gives me like a budget or an idea or a concept that I can do on a large scale, I think I'll be a happy camper the whole time. <laughs> That'd be tight. Um is there anything else that you want to shout out or plug or get off your chest, nair out? Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna have some more singles coming out. Uh, project is on the way. Um, you know, coming out late May, early June. So just be ready for dates. And, um, what's up? Yeah, oh, yeah. Then, um, tonight, but this will be posted later. But go ahead and check out Pyramid Sessions, um, on YouTube, and you'll find my live rendition of as bad as it looks and mm -hmm. you know just again go check out that single you'll love it <laughs> Hell yeah and then um i've never done this before on the podcast but would you want to hit us with a freestyle on our way out we can pull up the computer get you a little beat and yeah fuck yeah let's do it i Hell love yeah. it Hell yeah, yeah. All right, well. we'll be right back everybody fuck yeah all right, ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. this is a Bears Best First. I am super stoked to present to you guys Zayshawn Hazy Freestyle. Everything's going to be off the top. He's going to play us out. So sit back, kick your feet up, and enjoy the show. And here we go. You know, cause you know, baby girl, and I've been lost for a minute. I'm going hard when I'm in it, cause you know that niggas could just die any minute. I said, baby, let me spin it. You know that they just wanna take what's mine. And I don't wanna take more, I just wanna lay low, maybe on the basement floor. Probably reasons why I play this four hey. And the fork in the road I'ma go where I go That's the shit that I cannot plan So why the fuck would you just take my hand If you don't really mean it Why the fuck are we scheming on some plans and Baby, now I'm off for the minute I'm just trying to fly up Fuck it while I'm high as Fucking noses, and I know these niggas, yeah, they better wipe their noses. Cause I'm probably no hey, easy said and done. Even though I'm froze, baby girl, I know I won. Baby, if you go, then I hope you know the sun still shining on my home still. Probably reason why my feet kicked up on that couch, and they gon' tell me, Welcome home. You've been gone for so long I'm just saying sayonara to all of them bozos And all of them broke folk Might as well just not play around with these games Cause I know that this shit change Shit change Man, I don't fuck with bitch change Or bitch change Nigga, why the fuck these Man, then why the fuck they hey. Cause I know that I'd probably rather not Know my door is locked Know my door is closed Know that shit probably gonna rock him If I hit his nose, if he drop Then that shit a problem that is already solved And you know I ain't fucking op Niggas kill the op, nigga 
There's probably reasons why they shot niggas Cause they talking shit or probably why the fucking mop So now go ahead and tell them why though And I'm going inside, where the fuck I gotta lie though I'm just trying to make sure that all my brothers higher than a bitch Probably reasons lying and I'm rich But shit, I'm probably lying in a dish With my dead homies wishing that we probably had a mission But fuck it, now I'm lost Probably reasons I don't care about cars, so just buy it. Go ahead and try, but a bitch, but she like it. But uh, 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 uh lost in thought, like uh, probably why they she had to call the cops. Probably other uh, reasons why they had to tell him Tony got popped or that Tony got locked up. Probably reasons why I had to tell him Big Papa came home. So stop playing on your fucking phones Why your Twitter fingers got in Why your shit been acting cold uh, Sorry but I'm solid So you know I'll never fold But shit that's just me But that story getting old But story getting old But We like to ramble But we have a good time you know? Oh my goodness Well thank you for blessing the podcast I cannot Thank wait to get this shit out. That was a show. Yeah, that of course, man. Thank you for having me. You killed it. Thank you for stopping by. Of course. Everybody man. go check him me. out now. Um, new single is out now on all platforms. Uh, why don't you go ahead and hit him with your Instagram one more time? Hey, yeah, uh, that's at Zayshawn Hazy on uh, just about everything. Anything else, Zayshawn Hayes. Uh, you know, thanks for having me, man. Seriously. Yes, sir. Of course. Thanks for coming by. You killed that shit, man. To all the haters, man. Fuck you. Fuck you. I love you. Hey, and that's all, y'all. Deuces.